This is the Black Series Ned B before and after some very simple weathering techniques that I'm going to show you in this video today. I really love this character in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. If you wouldn't mind clicking that like button, that'll really help me out because videos like this really don't do well in the YouTube algorithm because they're a bit longer. But he looked a little bit too colorful as a figure, and I think the articulation and everything on this figure is great. The sculpt is amazing. He's just a little bit too yellow and clean. You can see the difference on the left, which is how he comes out of the package, and the one on the right is the one that I weathered. I did some dry brushing for myself. I'm going to show you how to do all of this using just a few simple products. It's super easy. Anyone can do it. I will have all of the products linked below. If we put him on the shelf here, you can see that the one on the right just feels a lot more within the Star Wars universe. It's a very subtle change, but I think this really makes all the difference when dealing with this figure. All of these products are linked below, but we're going to use some really simple cheap paintbrushes from Amazon. This Vallejo Model Wash, which is the gray color, a Vallejo Air Silver Paint. You can use almost any acrylic silver paint. And then just a paper towel, paper plate, some plastic cups. If you don't know where to find those, we have bigger problems. And then you'll need some Mr. Super Clear Matte Spray. This is my favorite of the matte finishing sprays that I've used. I've tried a few different ones over the years. You want to really shake it up good though before you use it. First thing we're going to do is spray the figure down. So I just have him out on the sidewalk here. Wear a mask and use a well-ventilated area here. I'm going to give it a good spray on both sides. Then we're going to take our Vallejo Model Wash. We're going to make sure we give it a really good shake, get all of those pigments mixed up. We're just going to spray a little bit on a plate, and then I'm going to use the biggest paintbrush that comes in this pack, just because we want to cover a lot of ground as fast as possible. I'm just going to start dipping the paintbrush in and really just slapping this on. I did give it a few minutes to dry because the Mr. Hobby just takes a little bit to dry. You want to make sure it's not sticky or wet looking. Wait till it looks completely dry. That also takes down a lot of the shine, which is really nice. But you can see I'm really just slapping it on here, and it's kind of settling into a lot of the cracks and the grooves, which is what you want because that's where grime and dirt would gather if this were a real life, you know, robot. And all of the techniques I'm showing you today, the reason I'm showing you is because they're really foolproof. Like you can, the worst thing you can do is kind of overdo it, but you're going to see how many coats we're going to do of this. It looks really heavy when it first goes on and then it gets almost invisible when it dries. You can see how nicely it is sitting into those little grooves in between those little squares at the bottom there but I'm really just kicking it on. I'm gonna use almost everything that is on the plate here. And just go layer by layer and then wait for it to dry. The only thing I wanna avoid are air bubbles. You see those bubbles forming on the head. So what I do is I kinda of just dab my brush on the paper towel and then I dab it on the head just to kinda of get rid of those bubbles. I'm not too concerned with the back of the figure, but I am just gonna slap some of this on just to cover that area as well. And everything is still feeling kind of clean, so I'm just really caking this stuff on. Because what the gray wash does is it you barely notice it dirtying the figure, but it does take down a lot of the yellow. So that's kind of what we're trying to do is desaturate the yellow without having to completely repaint this with a duller yellow. So this is just the way we're basically like mixing a pigment with a pigment that's already there. So if this figure was unpainted and we mixed a gray with this yellow color, it would give us the result that we're kind of getting here. But it's already been painted yellow at the factory or just cast in yellow plastic. And so we're we're just kind of taking that shine and that color down a bit. So here's where I'm going to end it for the first layer. And then we are going to take this outside and spray it again once this dries. So I'm going to let this sit for probably about 10 minutes uh, just to completely air dry. You can use a blow dryer, but just beware it's going to blow a lot of the water out of some of these crevices and towards the back of the figure. Let's compare this first layer to the finished product that I have from before. So you can see it's still not as dull as the one on the right. We want to take that yellow down even more. And so once that is air dried, I'm going to take it back outside and add another coat of this matte spray. So this is going to kind of lock in everything we've already done. And then we can go ahead once that matte spray dries and start doing the process all over again. A lot of people reach out to me all the time and tell me that they're interested in starting to customize their figures, but are just worried that they're going to mess them up or they're just kind of scared to, and just don't know where to start. Because a lot of amazing painters on Instagram that have years and years of experience, it's really scary to kind of look at them and, and just, you know, you, you feel like you'll never be able to get there. So I wanted to make today's tutorial really foolproof and just something that, you know, anyone can do. You can even do this with your kids. It's just a fun, easy process. And you really need to have that Mr. Super Clear in stock if you are a Black Series collector. The figures have been coming so shiny from the factory, but this is after I sprayed it with the Mr. Super Clear. I just think it's something that every Black Series collector needs to have at home. Please wear a mask if you use it though and do it outside. I know that sounds like a little bit overkill, but, uh, uh, you know, you can't be too safe with this stuff, especially when it comes to your lungs. 
games. I'm not an expert on this stuff, I just bought it in the shop and I really like the way it works. So just, you know, follow any instructions on there and just use common sense. I want to keep you all safe. You can see here how I'm dabbing the brush to get rid of those bubbles on the head. So after all of this dries here, you can see that there are some areas where it just caked on a little bit too hard. So I'm just going to use my finger to smudge those away, especially on the back where it kind of drips down. I'm just going to kind of even some of those spots out. It's okay to have some, you know, randomness on there. You do want it to have some variety but yeah here on the back i had the backpack on so it didn't really run in there so i'm just getting rid of some of those streaks that just look a little bit hand done if you will instead of just something that's kind of happened over time and i'm going to use a downward motion on these so it gives the effect that gravity is pulling the liquid down as it's been caked on there also if you just kind of dab it sometimes you can get your fingerprints on there which you don't want but i love the way this little streak here by the thigh is coming up that looks really nice and then we're gonna go ahead and give this another matte spray. And then guess what? We are gonna do it all over again one last time, but it's really satisfying to see the progress as we go through here. And each layer just, it sticks on more and more and it gets darker and darker and it just starts looking really nice. We're gonna fast forward a little bit here. The next section is the most fun part and just kind of the coolest. And so I'm excited to show you that. So let's just kind of blast our way through this. Spending a little bit more time on the back here since I kind of neglected it on some of the other layers, just making sure there's no visible smudges or fingerprints. Now with the Vallejo Model Air Silver, again you can use pretty much any silver paint. We're gonna use literally just one drop of it here. This is just so exciting and you'll see why I'm obsessed with dry brushing my figures. Keyword is dry. You want to use a brush that is completely dry. Don't use something that you've used already and washed. We're gonna take a tiniest little dab of paint and just brush it off onto the paper towel until basically the paint is not getting through to the inner grooves of the paper towel and it's just kind of hitting the edges. You can see there's almost barely anything on the brush now. We're gonna do a little test on the back here just to see that we didn't put too much on there. This is still actually a, a bit of a lot of paint but I'm just gonna start lightly brushing over any raised spots that I want to look metallic and you can see how beautifully it just picks up the raised areas and gives them a little bit of a scratched metal effect. And then it makes the whole figure look like it's made out of metal. And the key here is that less is more. If you overdo it, it'll look very painted and like you just kind of slapped metallic paint on there. So you can see just how when you use the full brush and just have barely any paint on there, it really starts picking up those edges and giving a, an amazing effect. It's so much fun. And I'm also gonna hit some of these flat areas here just to give a little bit of a sense that the, like, the metal's just wearing away at those points. And then I'm just gonna pretty much randomly go over all of these raised areas. You don't wanna really overdo it, but it's it's kinda hard to. This next section is my favorite because it's just this dark gray. It's very flat, but once we start brushing that paint on, it just picks up those raised areas and just now suddenly it looks alive and it looks metallic. It's such an amazing, simple effect that you can do. And the only way to really mess it up is if you use a brush that's too wet, either with water or with paint. But if it's pretty dry and you've tested it on a different surface like a paper towel to make sure there's almost nothing on the brush, also try it on the back of the figure first. And then once you get to a point where it's kind of going on like this, you can start moving your way to the front. I'm gonna just even hit the knuckles here. Once I start feeling like it's not really doing much, I'll get some more paint, but I still make sure to get almost all of it off my brush to the point where it looks like there's almost nothing on it. And then we're gonna start hitting these edges here. You can see there's actually quite a bit of paint here, so we're getting a little bit of a crisper silver effect here, which I don't mind. I'm just being very careful not to overdo it. There is so much beautiful sculpted detail here, especially like in those thighs, all those little servos and motors there. I'm gonna get my brush in there and just really pick those up. To get the hang of this, you are just going to be like raiding your collection closet just looking for figures that need dry brushing because pretty much any figure that has metallic uh, or is supposed to be made out of metal or you know any droids, that sort of thing, can use some of this effect as well as like different Boba Fett's armor. There's just so many different uses for this and you're going to be super addicted to it, trust me. Okay, so now this next part gets a little bit trickier. I'm going to take a little bit more paint on the brush. And then I'm just going to dab that a little bit, but not as much. I'm going to start just smacking different areas of this with a brush to give certain areas that just have a little bit more of a scratched effect. The rest is kind of like more of a worn down over time. These are more like, you know, specific injuries, we'll call them, or things that really took a chunk out of the paint here. And then you can also use your finger just to kind of smudge a little bit in case it's looking a little bit too heavy in certain areas. But just the way that the brush bristles kind of explode when you tap them give a nice scratched metal effect you just want to like again be careful not to overdo it or just not have it look too uniform 
as that guy in Andor says, it's too random to be random. And so you want to make sure that you're not just like over focusing on one area or just kind of spending. You don't want to space it out too evenly and, you know, have all of them just like be an inch apart or something like that. So I just kind of look at it from afar and just see where it could use some more. And again, you just don't want to overdo it. It's also fun to think about the character and how they interact with the world and where on their body that they might take the most damage. And then you do want to get your brushes clean pretty fast. You don't ever want to let paint or anything sit on the brush for too long. And the brush that you use for dry brushing isn't going to get kind of damaged. These are luckily very cheap, but I like kind of using that one as my dry brushing brush and just using it over and over again anytime I need that. And then we're going to add a little bit of that paint to the hammer here just to kind of make it feel cohesive. I'm going to use a slightly different brush because I actually w put some water on my dry brushing brush already. And so I'm going to use a different one here and just kind of lightly hit that. I'm being a little bit more dramatic with it uh, than I would just because it's a smaller piece and it can use a little bit more drama. So I did a final matte spray just to kind of seal this all in. So here's our finished result on the left. Let's look at where we started. Very yellow, very clean. They did do a decent bit of weathering from the factory paint job, but I just think this looks so much better. Has a lot more character, looks like it's kind of seen some action. And I actually like the new one I did on the left better than my first go around on the right. Please leave a like if you have not already, that really helps me out. Subscribe if you would like to see more content like this moving forward, or just general Black Series reviews, which I do a ton of. Thank you guys all for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Have fun!